Psalms 69 and verse 30. I want us to uh, read this verse in concert. Audible voice, if you can. Let's read it together. Psalm 69 and verse 30. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. One more time. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the power in that word. Thank you, Lord, for the power of magnification through thanksgiving. I pray that our hearts would reflect that this morning and through this week and all year. In Jesus' name, all God's people say amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want to uh, share with you for a few moments on the subject, the scope, the scope of Thanksgiving. I uh, was thinking this week, how many realize that oftentimes Thanksgiving is overshadowed by the biggest shopping day of the year? Isn't that true? (laughs) I mean... Before the butterball turkey is even stuffed and put in the oven. Before we've had a chance to sit down and give thanks. We're, we're teased with the notion that our nation's greatest treasure is material things. And that if only we could get our hands on more money and, and more possessions and more stuff. I mean, we would think that we would be considerably better. So, it happens every year. Just a few hours after our Thanksgiving meal, our nation marks the official beginning of the annual shopping season. And retailers are relentlessly reminding us of how much better our lives would be if we owned the latest gadget and and gizmo and upgrade of whatever... Millions of people will crowd the streets and parking lots and stores and begin filling their shopping carts and their lives with a lot of clutter. Makes me even tired to think about it. I think I'll sit down and take a break. Huh? Good thing you guys get to sit down. See... They, they say credit card debt is going to soar from $9,000 per household, which is the average, to record levels between now and, and the end of the year. Rubbermaid is going to sell another 100 million storage containers by this year end just to store all of our stuff. Hello. And a million Americans will declare bankruptcy by the end of the year. And Thanksgiving is going to barely be a little hiccup in the lives of our consumer-crazed culture. Right? Consumerism is more than the acquirement of material goods. It's a mindset that can hold tremendous sway over the way a person lives his or her life, and and it can cause us to be discontent in every circumstance. It causes us to be envious of others. It causes us to worry. Hello? Isn't that true? It it causes us to confuse needs with wants and, and to believe that our life purpose is that some people, I think, they believe they were born to shop. Shop till we drop. So so we collect more stuff. A few years ago, uh, I read the story of a man living in the Bronx in a tiny uh, 10 foot by 10 foot one room apartment. He compulsively saved newspapers, magazines, junk mail, books, and catalogs. He saved it all. And one day, he everything he owned and had saved and stockpiled came crashing down around his little uh, place there in an avalanche and they said for two days he literally stood in that mess around him trapped there until his neighbors heard his muffled cry two days 
And uh, they said the, the firefighters hauled out 50 bags of trash for a full hour just so they could reach him and get him out. Have you ever felt like that guy? <laughs> but a more damaging effect of consumerism is that it crowds out God in our lives. Hello. So I want us to take this time and revisit a, a biblical principle because one of the marks of a true child of God, church, is that they learn to and they long to magnify God in their lives. The book of Psalms, actually, I, I, I read this week, it contains 35 references to giving thanks. Uh, 18 instances in Paul's letters expresses thanksgiving to God. And there are 10 other instances in which we're, he instructs us to give thanks. So in all, I think they said approximately there's 140 references in the Bible to giving thanks. And, and so I, I think we can understand that thankfulness is not a minor principle. In God's eyes, right? Uh, It is absolutely necessary for the practice of godliness. And the Bible regularly mentioned Thanksgiving long before 1863 when, when during the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a national day of Thanksgiving to be celebrated. I'm glad he did that. But long before he did that, Thanksgiving was a principle in the Word of God. David wrote in another place in Psalm, I think it's 34, he said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. David said, I will magnify in our text the Lord. Lord with what? Thanksgiving. And the word magnify can be used uh, in two different senses. Okay, this is, this, is, this is the point of this sermon. So if you don't hear anything else, tune in to me right now. Okay, because the word magnify, I, I begin to look, can be used in two different senses. It can mean this, make something appear greater than it is. As with a microscope or a magnifying glass. Okay? Make something appear greater than it is. Brother Ezekiel, come here and help me. Have you ever used a microscope? Once. All right. Then that qualifies you to act like you're going to use it again. Okay, so hold that. Let's see. I guess if you're really going to use it, you've got to hold it that way, right? Okay, so turn around. Turn around this way. Face that way. There. Just look good because you're just my prop. Okay? All right, and every time I say microscope, bend your head and act like you're looking through it. Okay, let's try it. Microscope. He's got it. Microscope. Microscope. Okay, so the word magnify can be used in two different senses. It can mean make something appear greater than it is, as with a microscope. Or, or it can mean make something that may seem small or insignificant appear to be as great as it really is. Let me read that again. Or... It can mean make something that may seem small or insignificant appear to be as great as it really is. That is what our telescope does with our our magnificent universe, which once upon a time, I believe, just spilled over from the glory of God. I'm telling you, when you behold the heavens, hello, wow. So we, I brought a telescope this morning. Jesse, can you be the telescope guy? Okay, come over here. You ever used a telescope? Okay, just act like you know what you're doing. Every time I say telescope, you just kind of look through it. Telescope. All right, he's got it down. Telescope. All right, telescope. <laughs> so there are two kinds of magnifying. How many is with me so far? There's microscope magnifying, and there's telescope magnifying. Okay? And the one, the microscope, makes a small thing look bigger than it is. 
The other, the telescope, makes a big thing begin to look as big as it really is. Follow me? Do you recall, I mean, you may have been looking at a piece of a plant or some other microorganism through the microscope, but the purpose of using that microscope was to make something that's tiny, so tiny you can't see it maybe with the naked eye, but it makes it appear large. Now, do you remember the first time you used the telescope? Uh, I mean, when you looked at the heavens and, and uh, suddenly something that was enormous seemed to be up close, right? It, it came in personal and it was awe-inspiring. And so, do you realize that every day, church, we choose our reality of God through either a telescope or a microscope? I choose the telescope. When David says, I will magnify God with thanksgiving, he does not mean I will make a small God look bigger than he is. Hello? He means I will make a big God begin to look as big as he really is. As believers, we are not called to be microscopes. We are called to be telescopes. Christians are not called to be con men who magnify their product all out of proportion to reality when they know the competitor's product is far superior. There's nothing and nobody superior to our God. Praise God. I'm feeling like preaching this morning. And so the calling of those who David says love the Lord is to make His greatness begin to look as great as He really is. And the whole duty of a blood-bought Pentecostal believer can be summed up in this. uh, Feel, think, and act in a way that will make our God look as great as He really is. Uh, I want to see Him great and high and lifted up. Uh, I want Him to feel this place this morning morning. Uh, We are to be a telescope for the world uh, of the infinite starry wealth of the glory of God. God is great in every way and His greatness is to be valued above all else. And I think we should make it obvious to everyone else. Because the Apostle Paul says in Romans 1.20, he says, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Notice that. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful. Paul says everyone is without excuse. In other words, he says it ought to be obvious, uh, but it isn't a lot of times due to the sinful insensitivity and forgetfulness of our hearts to be thankful. And so I, I remember reading about one of the American lunar missions was in serious trouble some years back and the American people uh, was asked to pray for the safe return of of those astronauts who they felt were in trouble and in a dangerous situation and that lunar mission actually landed safely back on earth and when it did though credit was given to the technological achievements and the skill of the American space industry no thanks No credit was ever publicly given to God. And I thought, you know, that's not unusual, is it? It's a natural tendency of mankind. And many of God's greatest attributes and most awesome loving deeds pass in one ear out the other without causing the slightest ripple of emotion within our hearts. And when our hearts are in such a condition, we need to beg God, like I believe the Apostle Paul did, when he said to open the eyes of our hearts that we might know the hope from which we are called to what the riches and the glories of His inheritance in the saints are and notice the immeasurable greatness of His power to us who believe. You see, but even when God graciously removes the scales from our eyes so we can be moved by His greatness, we are still prone to forget what we have seen. Listen, church, we need to be reminded of a vision of the cross. We need to be reminded of the vision of an empty tomb. We need to be reminded of of Jesus speaking to about 500 people and then He ascends into heaven and says, I'm going to return just like I've departed. I'm going to come back to get you. Uh, 
isn't that what David preaches to himself? He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name and forget not all of His benefits. Soul, do not forget what God has done for you, David says. Instead, soul, he says, do what I am doing in Psalm 77, 11. It says, I'm going to remember the works of the Lord. I'm going to remember, I'm going to trade in my microscope for a telescope. Hello. And we're going to see we are called to be telescopes. People who make the greatness of God seem to be as great or actually be as great as He really is. That is what it means for a Christian to magnify God, David said, with thanksgiving. But we can't magnify what we have not ever seen. Huh? We cannot magnify something we have forgotten. Therefore, our first task is to see and to remember the greatness and the goodness of God to where He has taken us. Oh, aren't you glad you're not what you used to be? Oh, praise God. So we pray, Lord, open the eyes of our heart and we preach to our souls, soul, don't you forget all the benefits of the Lord. We Christians so often seem to be trying to stuff God in a small box of our own making so that we might try to fully comprehend Him. Hello? Huh? How many know that doesn't work? That doesn't work. And, and, and you can even turn the telescope backwards. All right? To try and make Him smaller and make and more like yourself. That's what it does when you turn it backwards. But all you're doing is distorting your view of an awesome, real God. How many know God doesn't fit into anybody's box? He is there for all to behold, stretched across the cosmos uh, like we can behold through the telescope. Uh, so, so, so big we cannot even get our minds around Him to imagine Him. Moses on one occasion wanted to see God for himself. How many remember that? Once he asked God, God, show me yourself, show me your glory. But Moses was only able to see the hinder parts of the glory of God. And that was even after he was hid in the cleft of the rock, uh, sheltered by the hand of God. Why? Because he would not have been able to process it. He would not have been able to take it. Uh, we're tempted to try and make some kind of pretty king in a box out of our creator of this universe. Uh, and then we have the audacity to stand in front of our tiny box uh, that we call God and try to tell others what's inside that box and what he's thinking. Listen, I'm telling you, it's time to let God out of the box. Let him be shown in all of his glory, high and lifted up. Oh, praise God. It's time to get him out from under the microscope. It's time to get out the telescope and say, God, you're awesome in this place. You're a God that is all inspiring. And I just want to worship you with all my heart. Hallelujah. I recall the debate in Time magazine between an atheist, Richard Dawkins, who has since passed away. Richard Dawkins was debating Francis Collins on God versus science. And at the very end of that article, the famous atheistic scientist Richard Dawkins stated this. He said, if there is a God, it's going to be a whole lot bigger and a whole lot more incomprehensible than anything that any theologian of any religion has ever proposed. That's probably the only truthful set thing he said in that whole time. Huh? Because I say amen to that. I have no problem with that. Instead, I kind of like to soak in that fact. God. Folks, there is no place on earth where God is not king. Huh? There is a lot of places where people reject his kingship, but that makes him no less of a king. Someone has noticed we will never talk about God behind his back. You can't do it. We cannot speak of God in His absence. The God who is being discussed is always going to be present. Uh, and I'm thankful that He is powerful. Uh, so raise your... I want us to raise our hands right now. Raise our voices. Let's magnify God for just a moment before we go any further. Would you magnify Him with a little thanksgiving this morning? Hallelujah! Lord, You're worthy. Lord, You're worthy. Thank You, Jesus. 
Where would we be without I feel the presence of God. He's coming into this place. He said He inhabits the praises of His people. When you begin to look at a telescope spiritually, you bring Him into focus and say, God, I thought you was far and distant and small, but you are really big in my life. I want to reach out and touch you. You can do it this morning, church. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Church, I have found out that a thankful heart is a victorious heart. Which sees victory even in the face of defeat. In the midst of life's battles. How many of you have ever got frustrated? Just frustrated. I mean, frustrated to where you, you just got convicted about it. I've been there. Now, Pastor Jones... You're a pastor. You shouldn't get that way. I'm human. Guys, I appreciate you. Why don't you sit down here? I don't want to keep you standing. Sit down here. But remember, every time I say microscope, every time I say telescope, there you go. Listen. We oftentimes find ourselves wrestling with God instead of fighting the true enemy. And through our frustration, we end up rebuking God instead of rebuking the real enemy. Huh? We get caught in a circle of complaining with God. I mean, hold on, how long, Lord, is it going to take for you to meet my need? Instead of thanking Him, For all that He's already done for us. Our unhappiness can keep us continuously seeking explanations from God. Lord, you owe me one for this. Hello. Instead of thanking Him for the mountains that He's already moved. Instead of thanking Him for the seas that He's already parted. Huh? How soon we lose sight of all the miracles that He has performed to bring us the victories that we often take for granted. While waiting for God to do big things for us, we forget to be thankful for the little things along the way. Listen, God wants to know if we're going to be thankful even for the smallest gifts that He gives. On the other hand, Satan wants us to become dissatisfied and disgruntled with God And with receiving those victories. Why? Because a disgruntled heart is easy for Satan to manipulate. Remember that. That's so important this morning. A dissatisfied heart is easy for Satan to step in and manipulate. How many of you want to be manipulated today? I didn't think so. Nobody raised their hands. huh? When we are frustrated with God, Satan can get us to do And get us to say things that we would not normally do or say. Huh? He manipulates us into having attitudes that can hurt our walk and hurt our faith in God. Jealousy jealousy and selfish ambition, they're both rooted in an ungrateful, disgruntled heart. And for a dissatisfied heart... It, 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 it's like hunger that's never filled. It's, it's, it's like a fire that never goes out. It, I mean, it's always saying, I need or I want or give me this or give me that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I need bigger and I need better. They, they have this. My family, your family has, my neighbor has, blah, 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 blah. If we allow it, that's going to eat away at our lives. But I've found out that a thankful heart keeps us in a great place. It's a place where Satan cannot gain access into our minds. I don't want Satan in my mind. I don't want him manipulating me. A place where it puts us, thankfulness puts us in a place where we cannot be manipulated by Satan. And the place is where we give thanks and praise to God for what he's done. First Thessalonians says, basically, whatever happens, keep thanking God because of Christ. He said, this is the will of God. Listen, in time of loss, it's easy to lose sight of of what we have, what we still have. In all circumstances, in all times, we, we should find something, church, to be thankful for. Remain thankful because if God has promised it, how many know He's, he's a promise keeper? He's going to complete it. 
our frustration and anxiety, all that does is hinder God. Praise and thanksgiving prove we are trusting for Him to do the impossible for us. We're trusting in His timing too. That's a big one. Philippians 4, 7 tells us that the presence and the peace of God are given to those who, who trust and rely on Him. The peace of God will guard your heart, Paul said, while anxiety erodes your heart, your faith and your trust in God. It erodes and it breaks down your faith, but the peace of God that passeth all understanding produces a thankful heart. Now, now so I want us to see this morning... Uh, I mean, think about some powerful words in our vocabulary. One of the most powerful words is Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, I want us to learn, though, a couple more words today. You say, what is it? I want us to learn the word, thank you, Lord. The words, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Remember for a moment how much you appreciate it when your child, how many moms and dads are here? Raise your hands. Be proud of those children. Remember for a moment how much you appreciate it when your child or children says those two words to you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Doesn't it feel good? Feels good. I don't know about you, but it makes me want to do more for them. Hmm? So, so God loves it when we say thank you, God. And thanking the Lord before we see it made evident in the natural, whatever, you know, go ahead and praise Him in advance. Thank Him in advance, we say. As we begin to thank Him, our appreciation keeps our eyes on His faithfulness. Oh, God is faithful, isn't He? Great is Thy faithfulness. Oh, how big is our God this morning, church? How awesome is our God? Take a look through the telescope. Hello? How faithful is our God? He's always shown up in time. He's never let us down. Complaining keeps our vision small and under the microscope, focused on our problems. Huh? It tries to take God and place Him under the microscope. But praise raises our eyes to look through the t telescope to see just how big and how awesome He is. And He's constantly looking after us. We need Him. To, we need to focus not just on rebuking the devil in our lives, church. But we need to focus, David says, on magnifying God in our lives. So every time you rebuke the devil around your house, go ahead and, and magnify the Lord with the next voice. Uh, I rebuke the devil. You don't belong in my house, but I magnify God in this place. Uh, come on, when you kick the devil out, you got to let God move in. I said, when you kick the devil out, let God move in. Let Him come in with all of His glory. Let Him fuel your life. Uh, let Him touch your family. Listen, friends, you will be surprised uh, what a little bit of praising around your home will do for you when you adore Him when you put the microscope away and get out the telescope. Woo! You'll find nothing's too big for our God. Hallelujah. I'm closing. I'm closing. Praise God. I want an accurate view of God, church. That's what it comes down to. He alone holds this world in the palm of His hand. He's the creator of all things. He holds it all together. If we understand that God created the mountains, then we believe He has the power to move our mountains. Hello. Oh, praise God. Anybody here this morning as we stand, how many need a mountain to be moved? How many is facing a mountain in your life? David said, I'm done with the telescope. I'm done with the microscope. Put it aside, Ezekiel. Put it aside kiss it goodbye. Not really. It's probably got enough germs on it already. So put your microscope down. Come over here. Grab the telescope. Take a look through it. Doesn't it look different? You might need to press it up, put it up a little bit towards the light. You probably can't see much down there. Oh, 
I want our, our perspective to be changed this morning. I want our perspective. I'm talking about the scope of thanksgiving. David said, put the microscope away. I'm trading it for a telescope to see just how big God really is. Father, I don't know who's here this morning. There's needs, there's situations, they're facing, no doubt, a lot of negativity in their lives or in their families. But, oh God, I just ask for your presence to come and simply remind us this morning, Lord. Remind us of how great you are, how big you are, and help us to focus on that and to adjust our perspective. Lord, we'll leave this morning with a spring in our step, knowing that you're still large and you're in charge. There's nothing too hard for God. Oh, hallelujah. I feel His presence. I feel His presence. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. You know that? And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give Him thanks. So give Him thanks right now, church. Give Him thanks. I feel His presence. Raise your hands right where you're at. Oh, Lord, we love You, Jesus. I want to give You thanks. I'll do that this morning, church. If you're weak, say, I'm strong. If you feel like you're lacking, you need to say, thank You, Lord. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm a child of the King. I've been washed. Oh, hallelujah. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Oh, would you slip out of your seat and stand across this front? And let's let's take a few moments as we conclude this service. Magnify the Lord. Magnify Him this morning. That's it, young people. Whatever your problem is, whatever your difficulty is, that's it, saint of God. Shift your focus this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For us. Oh, now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Oh, that's it. Worship Him. Just come around His throne this morning. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Just come around His throne this morning and worship Him. Hallelujah. Oh God, we lift You up.